The conservatives are incredibly mad about Lil Nas's new music video because Lil Nas may or may not have had sexual relations with Satan himself. Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you want to join the cuties fam, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials are linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, and my podcast, which I know I haven't made an episode in a while, but a new episode will be coming soon. Stay tuned. If you want to support me in any way that you can, that'll all be linked down below. So before we jump into this video, I want to give a big shout out to some of my patrons. A big shout out goes to Anton Lindblom. I hope I said your name right because I asked you for the pronunciation and... I'm hoping I did it justice. Um, also, shout out goes out to Jordan because I'm so sorry. I know I never shouted you out, but you've been on my Patreon for a while now. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot to. So shout out to you, Jordan. I love my patrons with my whole entire heart. You guys keep this channel running. Thank you so much for supporting me in this extra special way. Love you guys. Anyways, let's jump into the video. So today we're gonna be talking about the whole Lil Nas X situation. If you haven't heard of Lil Nas X, have you been living under a rock? He was the breakout artist who sang the song, I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. I got the horses in the back. <laughs> He's uh, the, He was the breakout artist with Old Town Road and then Billy Ray Cyrus hopped on the track and then it went like mega viral and it was at the top of the billboard charts. He became like a breakout sensation after that. And he just came out with a new song called Montero um, in brackets, call me by your name. If you didn't know, Montero was actually Lil Nas X's real name. Lil Nas X is like a stage name or like a pseudonym uh, for him as a performer. And Montero is his actual like real life human name. <laughs> he got the idea for like the song and like the call me by your name from the queer movie, which is actually, I think really cool. Like he got a lot of the kind of ideas for this song from that movie and from like a real life experience he was having, which I think is like really awesome. And he said he really liked that movie and like the queer representation and the idea of like calling someone else by your name. And that was kind of like the inspiration for the song. But also right before he put out the music video, he posted this on his Twitter. Basically it was just like a little letter to himself. And it said, dear 14 year old Montero, I wrote a song with our name in it. It's about a guy I met last summer. I know we promised to never come out publicly. I know we promised to never be that type of gay person. I know we promised to die with the secret, but this will open doors for many other queer people to simply exist. You see, this is very scary for me. People will be angry. They will say I'm pushing an agenda, but the truth is I am. The agenda to make people stay the fuck out of other people's lives and stop dictating who they should be. Sending you love from the future. And then he signed it Lil Nas X. I think that speaks to like why everything in the song and the music video exists. It's a commentary on him growing up, not only as a gay man, but a black gay man, which the black community and the LGBTQ community has always been deeply intertwined, but also has been deeply against each other in so many ways. So many black gay and black queer and black trans people have felt cast aside by the black community. And I think that has a lot to do with religion. And it's definitely a wound that like needs to begin healing because there are so many black gay people who are not only facing the oppression of being a black person in society, but who are also facing the oppression of being a gay or trans person or just queer person in general uh, in society. And that is too much for one person to bear. And I think it's incredibly traumatic to feel like you are being exiled by a community that you're a part of. So that was definitely something that was very hard for him growing up. As he said in that note to himself, you know, he promised himself that he was going to die with this inside of him, that he was never going to tell anyone that he was gay. He was never going to let himself out of the closet. And now he's finally able to be himself and be so comfortably himself in the way that's, you know, that kind of gay man, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people will only accept queer and gay people, if they fit a certain image or they fit a, a certain way of living, if they resemble as closely to a heterosexual cisgendered person, that's uh, the digestible version of a gay person for straight people. And obviously the video that he came out with caused an incredible amount of outrage. The conservatives are incredibly mad about Lil Nas's new music video because 
Lil Nas may or may not have had sexual relations with Satan himself. Maybe, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and all the conservative snowflakes were very upset. They started melting right then and there. And he also tweeted this. I spent my entire teenage years hating myself because of the shit y'all preached what happened to me because I was gay. So I hope you're mad. Stay mad. Feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. And genuinely, I think there's no better way to see it. You guys are spewing so much hatred towards LGBTQ people, telling them that feelings that they were born with that live inside of them are an abomination, are sinful, are the reason that they will be going to hell. Because they love someone of the same gender, they're going to burn and suffer in hell for eternity. Imagine growing up living with that amount of pressure and hatred on top of you for literally not doing anything wrong. I'm not stealing from someone, I'm not murdering someone, I'm just loving another human being and trying to have a healthy, loving relationship just like any other person. And to you, that's an abomination. But anyways, as many of you know, I was not offended by this music video whatsoever. I grew up uh, a devout Catholic, but I am now a, well, technically I'm a secular Buddhist. I don't believe in God, I don't believe in Satan, I don't believe in heaven, I don't believe in hell, I don't believe in like theism. I don't believe that there's an almighty uh, God-like figure that rules over us. I believe that we make our own decisions as humans. Those decisions reflect who we are as people. Uh, it's no reflection of if God is making us do something or if Satan's making us do something, I think we make those decisions as humans and we are the ones to be held accountable for those actions. Like if your excuse for telling a gay person they're going to hell is because God said so, no, 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 honey, you're saying that because you're just a bigot. God didn't make you do any of that. You did that yourself. Anyways, I think Christians look at this music video and they see it as like very one dimensional, but I see his music video as literal art. I see it as so like four dimensional. It has so many deeper messages in it. And even with his lyrics, I'm not gonna go too much into the lyrics because the lyrics don't exactly connect to like the music video and the message as a whole. But if you wanna know more about like him breaking down the lyrics, I will link down below his uh, interview with Genius where he breaks down all of the lyrics and what they mean. Um, it's mostly just about him and like this guy he met and like wanted to hook up with uh, and he explains it all. But I think I wanna break down kind of like the deeper meaning of the music video and then we'll get into him and his beef with Caitlyn Bennett on Twitter. So at the very beginning of the music video, he says, In life, we hide the parts of ourselves that we don't want the world to see. We lock them away. We tell them no. But here, we don't. Welcome to Montero. Which I think is such a cute message at the very beginning. Just kind of like, so many times we hide away those feelings. We hide away those dark parts of ourselves that we don't want the world to see. But like here in this world that he's created, you know, we don't. Like Montero, him as a human being, like young Montero, he's like looking at his young self being like, we don't have to hide that part of ourselves anymore. There's people who are going to love and accept us. So basically at the very beginning, this is just my own interpretation of the music video. So I obviously don't know if this is like correct, but he's basically playing guitar under this tree and there's a serpent like circling the tree. And so my interpretation of this is this is like the Garden of Eden and he's playing... Um, I think he's playing Eve. I would assume so, because Eve is the one that gets seduced, which honestly, that whole Adam-Eve story is incredibly misogynistic, um, just painting women as the, the ones who are seduced by evil. If you know anything about the Adam and Eve story, the serpent is the one that like seduces Eve into evil and gets her to uh, take a bite of the forbidden fruit, which is like known to be the sin of like sexual lust or desire or whatever. So he's sitting on the tree and the snake is like circling the tree, um, trying to seduce him. And eventually he he tries to run away from, <laughs> he tries to run away from the snake, but he ends up being seduced by the snake. Does a little nasty with him. So after he gives in to the snake, it pans back to like the tree he was sitting under. And there's like Greek, there's like a Greek phrase inscribed in the tree. And I recognize this right away because if you guys don't know, I mean, I've mentioned it a million times on my channel, but in university, I majored in philosophy, like, I got my degree in like philosophical ethics and public affairs, which is like 
political philosophy. And so basically we learned so much about Plato's Symposium. So basically in Plato's Symposium, it's like a story of like the beginning of mankind when like all humans were in these like big blobs. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. I'm trying to remember from when I studied it, but basically it was like all humans were in these big blobs uh, made up of like two people. And some of them were like man and man. Some of them were woman and woman. Some of them were like man and woman. And they were kind of like this big ball with like heads and arms and like legs. One day Zeus got really, really angry and split them all in half. So it was kind of like there's another person on this earth that is like your other half. And that's why we have specific attractions to like certain things in people because we see our other half in that person. I don't know if that makes sense. So yeah, it was basically like the beginning of mankind everyone was like put together with their soulmate. And then when Zeus split everyone, it was like, you didn't know who your soulmate was. So you were trying to like search the earth for like your other half or like the person that was gonna make you whole again, uh, like you were at the beginning of mankind, if that makes sense. So the Greek words that were on the tree are actually a quote from Plato's Symposium. It loosely translates to something like, after the division, the two parts of man, each desiring his other half or something like that. Yeah, so I remember reading all about this when I read Plato's Symposium. It was in my philosophy of love and sex class, I think in my earlier years of university. And it was, it was actually really interesting uh, learning about that. It was like a, revolutionary text by like Plato. Plato's Symposium has actually been a text that has been studied very intensely in like queer theory and stuff because it's this idea that from the beginning of mankind, you had this person who was connected to you in that way. He even put forth this idea that some men were in a ball together and some women were in a ball together. And when Zeus split them, they were looking for their other half who they were meant to be with. And some men were supposed to be with men and some women were meant to be with women and some men were meant to be with women and et cetera, et cetera. And so it's been studied in kind of like queer philosophy and like queer theory, um, understanding that we have this thing like innately in us that is searching for that other person. And some people are searching for something that might not be the norm in what we consider today. Anyways, moving on to the next part of his music video. I, this part really resembled the Hunger Games to me. I could almost imagine him being like, I volunteer as tribute, I volunteer. Um, but he kind of looks like Effie Trinket, low key. Um, but he's clearly in a like Roman Colosseum. It gives me those vibes. And then he's chained up in the middle, which to me kind of resembles what they used to do in like ancient Rome. I'm pretty sure they would persecute people in the Roman Colosseum. I mean, I, I don't know if it's proven or not, but they used to like it's, it's said that they used to like chain people up and like stone them in the Roman Colosseums and like persecute them there. It's almost as if he committed that sin in the Garden of Eden and is being persecuted in front of everyone. Or that's at least my interpretation of what's going on. And then he begins like ascending into heaven. And as he is, like a stripper pole just starts coming from the sky and he like wraps his hands around it and starts flying downward. And he's flying through like kind of like the Colosseum walls and he's, you know, doing amazing um, stripper acrobatics, you know, grinding on the pole, looking sexy as heck. And then he is going down the stripper pole into the fiery pits of hell. <laughs> and when he reaches the bottom, he reaches like the gates of hell. Oh, and I forgot to mention that as he's walking into hell and is like going to meet Satan, there's a phrase at the bottom in Latin that says, they condemn what they do not understand. And I think that is also another like hidden meaning in it because that is the commentary on Christianity is that they condemn the things that they do not understand. They condemn gay people because they just cannot fathom and cannot understand that someone is living a life that is different than them. And he enters in strutting his stuff and he meets Satan. And then he gets on Satan's lap and he um, gives Satan a lap dance. <laughs> Call me what you want. Call me what you need. Call me in the morning, I'll be on the way. He gives the devil a satanic lap dance. Um, we got some satanic twerking going on. And then he kills Satan, um, takes off Satan's horns, puts, puts them on himself and like becomes Satan himself. I think what a lot of Christians were mistaking on this is they were seeing it as very one dimensional and they were believing that this was like a demonic Satan worshiping 
music video because I, I think like Christians really love to like place Satanism and like demonic stuff onto people where it's like, first of all, Satan doesn't exist. Um, you know, you'll see Christians say, oh, Billie Eilish is like channeling Satan in her songs and her songs are demonic. And they even said this back in the day with Led Zeppelin and like all of those old rock bands um, that those rock bands like sold their soul to the devil and stuff and that their songs if you played them backwards was like messages from satan and stuff trying to place like satan on literally everything that they just don't like <laughs> um but i don't think this video was meant to be like satan worshiping or like stuff like that it's literally just a commentary on how religious people time and time again have told queer people told lgbtq people if you are who you are if you love who you love you are an abomination and you're going to hell and you're going to suffer and burn in hell for all of eternity and i think what little nos has done here knowing that he struggled with his sexuality for so long and promised himself that he would die with this you know what i mean because he didn't want to go through the pain and suffering that these people were telling him he would go through. And now he's saying, you know what, fuck it. I would rather go to hell and twerk on Satan and literally become Satan himself if it means that I get to live my life authentically as who I am and not live in a closet and not hide who I am and not lie to people about who I am. If I get to be authentically myself on earth during my time here, I don't care what happens after. I know I lived my life and I lived my truth and that's what's important. And I think that message is so much more beautiful and so much bigger than like Christians are making it to be. They're just thinking he's some flamboyant gay who's pushing his gay agenda on people and pushing his Satan worship on people. And it's like, no, I'm sure Lil Nas doesn't actually believe in Satan or care about hell or worship Satan. I don't think he thinks any of that stuff. I think it's a commentary on how religious people have shoved hell in our faces for so long and now gay people are taking that power back Lil Nas is taking that power back and saying well you've said I'm going to hell and I'm gonna go there in style bitch like I'm gonna go down a stripper pole I'm gonna twerk on Satan like you think that hell's gonna be suffering if all the gays are in hell this shit's gonna be a fun time what are you saying I truly think his music video and his song as a whole this being put out into the world is a critique on Christianity and not only Christianity but all religions who condemn LGBTQ people and how repressive that nature is. We as p people in the LGBTQ community are taking back that power and taking back those things that were used to hurt us, like saying we're going to hell and stuff and saying we're gonna burn for eternity and that we're an abomination and that we're horrible, terrible, no good sinners. Um, we're taking that, we're rebranding it, we're repackaging it, and we're taking that power back. Religious trauma is real, and a lot of LGBTQ people suffer from religious trauma. That's something that a lot of religious people don't take into consideration, that what you're doing is horrible, and it's disgusting, and you are hurting other individuals, and if this person isn't doing any anything to hurt you, other than, I don't know, make you uncomfy, um, just get over it. Like, I'm sure Jesus and God would be happy if you just minded your own goddamn business. <laughs> and anyways, on top of the music video literally being iconic, the song also goes so hard. Oh my gosh, that shit slaps. That is a fucking banger right there. Like, I can't stop listening to it. I'm like, call me what you want. Call me what you need. Call me in the morning. I'll be on the way. And uh, Lil Nas has just been making me laugh like all week with his tweets and shit. Um, and also his TikToks. Like this one specifically. Like they were talking about it in a church. <laughs> just look at this. Um, Montero, call me by your name. Music video. Lil Nas X is doubling down on his demonic imagery with the new Nike release, quote, Satan shit. Oh, all of these TikToks just killed me. First of all, I would like to say thank you for letting me in, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I was like, look up. Who was that? Shush. Little nauseous. I feel like a little nauseous. I need to sit down. I can go. No, I can go. Girl, I'm just go, because I know you're lying. I'm literally God. <laughs> I know you're lying. I'm literally God. All right, y'all have heard the new uh, Little Nas song. You don't think I've heard it? I've heard it. I'm cool. It's a fun song, right? But let's dig deeper, shall we? Let's look at the lyrics. Call me when you want. Call me when you need. Sounds like a good friend to me. Wrong. It's a gay friend. I lost count of the times he talks about premarital sex. You want to learn about sex? Start with marriage. Tell me you love me in private. More like we need to tell people we love Jesus in public. This video makes Satan look sexy and cool. You know what is cool? Praying. Reading your Bible. I watched that video. I don't want any of you watching it, but I watched it for research. And you know what else? I had some homosexual thoughts after watching that. 
If that isn't evidence of demonic spirits, I don't know what is. Father God, we ask for your forgiveness. Get these images of his bold out of my mind. Pray God that he would get saved and that his next album would lead as many people to Christ as he just led to Satan. Literally, that is that is literally Christian pastors right now. So my grandma watched the Lil Nas video. Gray, I'm very happy you called. Did your mother tell you that I wanted you to call? Yes. I saw that you shared a video on Facebook. The little Nazi video with uh, the man kissing on Satan. You mean Lil Nas? Lil Nas X? It's just a funny video. It's nothing serious. It tells the world that my grandson wants to hump Satan. You're bargaining with your soul. Do you want to go to hell, Gray, or paradise? Paradise. Well, you're not getting in. I mean, weren't you the one that was saying racial slurs to the bag boy at the grocery That's store the other day? Different. Two men humping is bad enough. You dress one up like the devil and call it art. I don't believe But anyways, yes, a lot of Christians and conservatives were incredibly upset at Lil Nas for his uh, demonic imagery. And he's also selling a pair of shoes, which I'm pretty sure Nike is suing him for this right now, which is a whole other deal that I'm not gonna talk about. Basically, he's selling a shoes that has like actual human blood in the soul. And it has like the pentagram on it, you know, like the, the Satan star or whatever, the pentagram like all over it and stuff. And he's he was trying to sell those. I'm pretty sure Nike's suing him for that. So of course this stuff was going viral all over Twitter. The conservatives were incredibly upset about this. And so in the midst of all of this, Caitlin Bennett tweets, it's weeks like these that I'm thankful to be blocked by Lil Nas X. And then a picture of her being blocked by him. So I guess she was saying, you know, everyone's getting so upset about this and I'm just proud to be blocked by the Satan worshiper, you know what I mean? And so little Nas quote tweeted her and said, I still see your tweets, shitty pants. I fucking love him so much. And then she quote tweets his tweet and says, the guy that takes it up the from Satan wants to talk about shitty pants. And then, oh my God, the, the comment under that was, so you agree, you have shitty pants. <laughs> It's like she's not denying the fact that she definitely did shit her pants. And then this is the part that just really pissed me off. Like I was having a good laugh until this part. And then I was like, of course, Caitlyn just had to pull the racism in. She just couldn't, she couldn't have five minutes talking to a black person without being like, how do we make this racist? How do we make this as racist as humanly possible? So she quote tweets him again when he said, I still see your tweet shitty pants. She quote tweets him again and says, do you still see your dad? Like, I don't even think I need to explain to you why that's racist, but if you need me to, um, this is an incredibly racist trope and racist stereotype of the deadbeat black father that has been created through, like, literally decades and, like, centuries um, to try to demonize black men, especially demonize black men who uh, statistically were away from their families because they were being mass incarcerated, put into prison for much longer sentences than they needed to be being put in prison for wrongful convictions. Like there's so much research you can do on like why the stereotype exists. And it all leads back to the oppression and racism of black people. And the fact that you are perpetuating this racist stereotype that had nothing to do with the original conversation just shows us what your immediate thought of black people is. Like you're having a conversation with a black man and yeah, you're going back on forth in Twitter, but your first thought it's just a racist trope. Let me just slide that in there. Like, so, like, how often do you see your dad? Like, what did that have to do with the conversation at all? It was just like, if you had any question in your mind before this of if Caitlyn Bennett was racist or not, I hope this answered it for you because it answered it for me. I mean, I already knew, but it was like, she's not even trying to hide it anymore. Like before she used to like argue with people being like, what did I say that was racist? What did I do that was racist? And you'd kind of give kind of like vague examples of like things she did that were like insensitive. But now I'm just like, mm, no, this is straight up just racist and disgusting. Um, but the funniest thing is that literally Lil Nas, like a few tweets before this, tweeted that his dad um, texted him about the video and his dad said, very creative video. I got through it. And then a bunch of laughing faces. And he said, congratulations, live life on your terms. Very proud of you. And a bunch of like, like emojis. Like how sweet of a father, like his father clearly is still in his life and supports him and who he is as a person. I mean, that just kind of like owned Caitlyn all on its own. Like your racist trope 
wasn't even true. <laughs> like, and then she retweeted this other guy and said, everybody is willing to condemn Lil Nas X for his overly satanic music video, but still nobody wants to say anything about his open homosexuality. Maybe there's a connection there. Like, I don't even know what this means. There's clearly a connection there. His open homosexuality and the music video was a commentary on his open sexuality and how Christianity condemns him for that and tells him he's going to hell. So he's taking his power back and going to hell in style. What, are you not putting the, I swear to God, some of these conservatives have literally zero brain cells. Like you didn't put that connection together, sir. What? I think we need to like exercise the noggin a bit more, okay? And then little Nas quote tweeted her saying, do you still see your dad? And he replied, yup, and I might fuck yours. <laughs> I fucking love this dude, man. And of course, Caitlyn comes back with some dumb shit saying, Lil Nas just threatened to R word my dad. Sounds about what I'd expect. Well, she sounds fucking stupid um, because that's not what he was saying. When someone says something like, oh, I might F your girlfriend or whatever, or I might F your mom or whatever, it's implied that your mom or your girlfriend or your dad or whatever is being seduced. Um, not that it's unconsensual. It's not like I'm gonna do it without their consent. It's like, I'm gonna do it and they're gonna like it kind of thing. It's like, I'm gonna seduce your mom and they're gonna wanna do me. Or you know what I mean? Something like that. So it's like, where did he say he was gonna R word your dad? Nowhere, you're just making shit up to be inflammatory. And then Caitlin Bennett retweeted another tweet that said, a sane country would make it illegal for Lil Nas X and his handlers to corrupt and destroy America's children. And this is another f funny thing that I've mentioned like a few times is that so many conservatives put the burden of like raising their children on celebrities and like social media influencers and like artists and shit. Oh, they're corrupting America's youth and they're corrupting our children. And like we, and it's like, maybe you should pay a bit more attention to like what your kids are like looking at on the internet. Like your job is to parent your kids. And they're like, well, if Lil Nas X and Cardi B don't parent my children, that means I have to do it. And I don't want to do it. So they just need to make better music for children. It's like Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion and Lil Nas X are not here to parent your kids. They're here to make art and they're here to make music. And a lot of people like that music. Uh, so it's your job to not let your kids be looking at that shit online. Why are you letting your kids listen to that? That's bad parenting on your part. That is totally on you. Oh my God. And then someone, <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone photoshopped Lil Nas X. <laughs> on Caitlyn's wedding photo with her husband. And honestly, we have been saying for a while now that Caitlyn's husband looks a little bit fruity. <laughs> We're like, these conservative women are always like, bring back manly men. Bring back the manly, beastly men that we know and love. And then they marry men that look like this. And it's like, I'm totally okay with that. Like, I think feminine men are, are wonderful, but like, how are you gonna say, bring back manly men and then marry this fruity boy. <laughs> Sorry. But anyways, in my opinion, I think that Lil Nas X absolutely dragged Caitlyn. Like it was just, there was no competition, absolutely annihilated her, destroyed her, point blank, period. Like no two ways about it. I, I, I had such a bad day that day too. And I like, I was in such a bad mood. And then I saw that on Twitter and I literally was like, Day better. Day so good. I killed me laughing. Like I was crying. Lil Nas X, all of his tweets have been killing me all week. Uh, let me read you a few of them. This guy tweeted, it's just sick and depraved in an attempt to destroy our society. And Lil Nas said, there's a mass shooting every week that our government does nothing to stop. Me sliding down a CGI pole isn't what's destroying society. <laughs> like facts. <laughs> this guy tweeted, I think the biggest problem for me is the fact that he don't understand Old Town Road is every kid's anthem. Children love him for that record. They tuned in and subscribed to his channels. So with no disclaimer, he just dropped some left field, whatever. And then Lil Nas said, I literally sang about lean and adultery in Old Town Road. You decided to let your children listen. Blame yourself. Like seriously, why are you putting the burden on celebrities to raise your children? It's not their job. That job is solely yours. And this one fucking killed me. I cried laughing. <laughs> Someone tweeted, God will have the last word when it comes to Lil Nas X. And that is all I have to say about this. And then Lil Nas <laughs> tweeted a photo of God texting him. 
<laughs> saying, you good little bro, these people overreacting, lol. <laughs> God's like, you good, you good, don't worry about it. Lil Nas X on that dumb shit I see, he will pay the piper, hashtag the most high is not to be mocked. And he said, the only motherfucker I mocked was the devil. I thought y'all hated that guy. <laughs> seriously he's like i mocked the devil i thought y'all hated him i thought you'd be okay with this i find the problem is is that when a woman or like a gay man especially a gay black man sing songs or create art or music about their sexuality or owning their sexuality it's it's literally demonized it's looked down upon it's seen as gross and raunchy and disgusting but when like a straight man does it, it's fine. You know, when Justin Bieber sings yummy about his sex life with his wife, or when The Weeknd sings about, do you like the way I flick that tongue and nah? You know, they were not a song, it's like so sexual. Honestly, that's a bop, don't get me wrong. But people will rarely critique straight men, especially like you conservatives listen to so much country music where they literally talk about so much bad stuff, but in like a country twang. So you don't see it as bad, but when Cardi B, owns her sexuality, when Megan Thee Stallion owns their, her sexuality in a song, you see it as disgusting. When a gay man owns his sexuality in a song, you see it as disgusting. But I think what's important is that women and queer people keep normalizing this discussion of these topics from their perspectives. How wonderful is it if we keep getting more queer creators talking about their worldview and their experience with other queer people in their music, you know? We get lesbians talking about other women. We get gay men talking about men. We get bisexual people talking about both. We get people talking about their real world experience that connect to our world experiences because I think I can speak for a lot of LGBTQ people. We're kind of sick of hearing the same straight love story in every single song or every single music video or every single movie or TV show we watch. We want to see other things. We want to see things that represent our world view and our world experiences. Um, so I think it's really amazing how Lil Nas X is becoming that kind of voice for queer people and saying, you know what, I'm going to own my sexuality and I'm going to put it in my music. And that's speaking to so many people and I think it's incredibly important. Um, people are going to look down on it, obviously. I think it's important that we keep talking about this in our music and in our art. Anyways, I think that's all for this video. I think that's all I have to say. If you're mad about Lil Nas's new song or his new music video, stay mad because it was probably for you. It was probably so you could understand the criticisms on Christianity, your own religions, and for you to look internally and see what you've done to LGBTQ people. Anyways, that's all for this video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.